Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. Disrespectful and not good enough. That's how Premier Peter Gutwin has described the AFL's non-response to a letter seeking clarity over a standalone Tasmanian team. The apparent slap in the face is now compromising negotiations between the government and Tasmania's two tenants, Hawthorne and North Melbourne. Tasmanian governments have long had disagreements with AFL House, but rarely has the retaliation been quite as strong. To be frank, I think it's disrespectful of uh, the AFL in terms of the way that they have managed this. This refers to a letter sent by the Premier to AFL boss Gil McLaughlin two weeks ago, seeking a timeline towards a Tasmanian team by 2025. No reply has been forthcoming. I don't think it's good enough. Uh, we're a football state. Um, uh, the AFL should be treating us with more respect. The non-response creates a logjam in Hawthorne and North Melbourne's negotiations for a deal beyond 2021. The letter confirms talks with Hawthorne are now on hold, while key kangaroo sponsor TT Line is waiting for clarity, as the Premier considers any new deals with the two clubs be transitional towards our own licence. Until we know what the AFL's view is on uh, granting Tasmania its own licence, uh, we won't be able to conclude those negotiations. The Premier signals the next deal with those clubs should have a transition to a Tasmanian team in mind. We want to have clarity uh, as to when uh, we may get an AFL licence. And that will inform us in terms of what shape those deals take. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Caravan park operators are pleading for help to fill their empty campgrounds. One industry group has proposed cars and caravans travel for free across, across Bass Strait, billing it as a solution to our tourism woes. Despite our border opening, holiday parks around the state are still waiting to be filled. Our forward bookings are still sadly really down based on previous years. This time last year we had 80% more forward bookings than we do currently. So yeah, we're a little alarmed and hope things pick up. After a horrendous year for all tourism operators, they're still struggling to attract mainland visitors. Exorbitant car rental prices could result in many bringing their own. We looked at the cost of hire cars and it was up around the $1,000 mark. So we decided that instead we would be best off to um, take the boat and bring our own car. But the Spirit can be just as expensive. This vehicle and caravan cost $2,623 for a one-way trip. Fees like that are a barrier to the Apple Isle for many in a customer base we sorely need. We've had the park here for six years and over 75% of our business comes outside of Tassie's borders. The Caravan Industry Association of Australia are calling for the expansion of a scheme which subsidises the cost for vehicles to travel Bass Strait. They say making it free would see our caravan parks rebound like the mainlands already have. Anything to help people get over here would just be a massive a massive stimulus for, for, for what has been a really, really tough year for us. With those who come by caravan bringing the highest bang for buck, the industry body says the move could jumpstart the whole of tourism in the state, not just holiday parks. We know that cars and caravans on the Spirit, you know, those, those passengers travel more broadly than just people coming in on planes. They'll go to the regions, they'll spend money in the places that need it most. So, uh, yes, we're certainly backing up that call. While the scheme is a federal initiative, the state government is open to change. Again, um, we'd always like to see the freight equalisation scheme extended, uh, but uh, we're working closely with TT Line uh, in terms of uh, what options might be available there. Caravan park owners just want to see their parks full. It's funny, you can be as cautious as possible with your business planning, but you can, things can grind to a standstill overnight and put you in a really vulnerable position. It's really unfortunate. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The state's transport minister has conceded the new spirit vessels could still be built in Europe, despite forming a task force to explore a local option. Michael Ferguson was again cornered into defending the government in a fiery day of questioning in government business enterprise hearings. Firing questions on the potential for a local ferry build. What is on the ground in Australia and, and what may be possible? Does Tasmania have any facilities that would allow for the fit out of steel monohulls if there was a, a hull towed to Tasmania? Specific facilities? Uh, I don't believe so. Where would the hull actually have to be tied up? 
Well, that's a very good question. On the day of tense parliamentary hearings, the Transport Minister remained firm, saying all options for replacement Spirit of Tasmania vessels are on the table. We could end up, uh, um, in the fullness of time, having a European build. Uh, it also uh, should be a possibility that is being countenanced for an Australian build or potentially a hybrid uh, model approach. With the procurement process paused for six months, the government is now awaiting the task force's report due next year. We're certainly encouraging those pitches to be made to the task force, but the role of the task force, of course, is not to uh, make any direct selections of any kind, but rather to advise government on next <coughs> steps. Currently, there are no Australian companies who can build large steel monohull vessels to international maritime organisation standards. Attention soon turned to alleged pedophile nurse James Griffin, who worked on board the Spirit from 2003 to 2009. There was no, uh, no records of any, any um, uh, concerns um, in, in relation to him. The TT Line CEO revealed those who work for the company currently don't need working with vulnerable people cards. At this point, I'm not aware that that's a requirement. Is it something you might have a look at, Mr Dwyer? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Mm. The controversial polo pony case was also raised. No one in authority has provided us with evidence that the, that the animals passed away on the ships. No one cares more about the welfare of animals on our ships than we do. But um, we're just getting a bit sick and tired of, of the commentary that's associated with this issue. We really are. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. Tasmania's Peak Social Services Group is warning the state is falling woefully short of new housing. It claims a thousand new homes from the state government and hard work by charities won't be enough to bring the crisis to an end. New homes in New Norfolk. The Catholic Church is on a building crusade. We delivered 222 new houses last financial year. We're looking to increase from that, uh, getting close to 250 homes. At the moment, we've got around about 165 homes under construction across the state. Nine properties were added to the tally today. Among the guests, the Housing Minister, keen to promote his own promises. We've got about 600 builds underway right now around the state and we've just gone to market and closed an expression of interest process to build 1,000 more on top of that. That target, expected over three years, falls well short of demand, according to the Peak Social Services Group. In order to meet current and projected need, we need to be building 1,000 affordable homes each year over the next 15 years. Roger Yench says his government isn't leaving the heavy lifting to churches and charities. Nobody does this by themselves. So when Ben talks about the model that underpins these homes, this is government-owned land under a 40-year lease. And after years of Hobart dominating housing concerns, the worry is shifting to regional Tasmania. I think I would have lost count on the number of people that have come into my office desperate for housing, especially families that are facing homelessness, that are homeless, and what we can't, we can't do anything for them because there simply are no houses. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. More than 150,000 plastic bags have been diverted from landfill and transformed into sustainable asphalt, paving this road in suburban Hobart. If the trial is successful, the initiative could be rolled out on all roads across the city. In the past, um, it was a bit more expensive, uh, but now we actually negotiate a fairly good uh, uh, price with the supplier. There's a lot of really good reasons for using this product. It's environmentally are sustainable, it's using local products and if it lasts longer and is the same price then it's a win-win for everybody. Other councils across the state have paved the way with similar schemes. The Christmas spirit is alive and well in Glenorchy with Santa's helpers packing thousands of presents for vulnerable Tasmanians. Volunteers for the Smith family's Toy Appeal working to help 1500 children have a brighter festive season. Thousands of toys sorted through and packed away, destined for those who need a little extra cheer this Christmas. Today we've got volunteers from a lot of the companies that support the Smith family um, here packing toy and book hampers that we'll distribute later next week to families. After a tough year for many Tasmanians, the Smith family book and toy appeal is even more important. 1,500 children set to receive these gifts. 
it's really important for the kids to be receiving these presents, but as much as that, it's also important for the parents to be able to give the presents. Tim and Sean have been volunteering for the appeal for the past four years, and they have no plans of stopping the cause close to their hearts. I wanted to be part of it to sort of give back to the community. Um, my mother was active with the Smith family as well, so and it's to help, I suppose, honour her. Just uh, enjoy the idea of uh, helping others out at Christmas time and uh, remind you about what Christmas Australia is probably about. These volunteers will be very busy over the next couple of days, packing up almost 5,000 toys and books to be shipped out across the state just in time for Christmas. And the generosity that that represents is just incredible. You know, lots of smiles on lots of faces is what we're aiming for here. Donations can still be made to the Smith family in the lead up to Christmas. Next Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Meanwhile, another appeal is underway to make sure there are no empty plates on Christmas Day. Colony 47 is seeking help from businesses to run its Christmas lunch. This year's mill will be a delivery rather than a sit-down event. The demand's much higher, so we're really reaching out to businesses uh, and, and local, uh, local businesses and the individuals to support us this year more than ever. We just love being involved in, um, in the community, helping out where we can. 370 people have already registered for meals. Christmas shoppers in Launceston have been treated to a surprise performance. Moving to the classic track Dancing in the Streets, the pupils from Youngtown Primary more than lived up to the name of the song. There's a particular love that comes from the energy of sharing something that you uh, enjoy doing and the smiles on their faces and uh, that collaborative work, sharing and working as a part of a team is, uh, has been evident today. Everyone participated and having a good time with friends and having a good laugh at some of the dancing moves with, that we pulled off in it. The Star Dance students had two weeks of preparations before delivering their explosive performance. The Hobart Hurricanes are about to enter the Big Bash bubble, beginning life out of a suitcase alongside the other teams now in Tasmania. In another curve ball ahead of the season opener, Ben McDermott is stepping away from the fill-in captaincy role as he eyes a higher spot up the order. A beautiful backdrop for a Big Bash season we'll likely never see again. A quartet soon to be in close quarters bringing the prize ashore. We all love summer of cricket and, um, and yeah, you know you sacrifice a few little things to get that underway. Ben McDermott has sacrificed the fill-in captaincy role which came into use when Matthew Wade was away to focus on his own performance. I've chosen not to, not to do that this year just with my keeping and batting role I thought it just sort of hindered a little bit last year and um, didn't play my best cricket. McDermott is hoping to lift from the middle order to the number three spot. He'll also need to adapt to the new rule changes being introduced this year, which administrators hope will spice up the game. I think in previous years everyone was starting to really get a um, handle of playing T20 cricket. It's just throwing a little bit of a spanner in the work and, and see how it goes, but it's exciting. New recruit Peter Hanscom is open to taking McDermott's backup captain role as he had a feel for his new team in a final practice match before Thursday's opener. I know the boys are, are pretty good and, and they'll look after themselves. So uh, whoever gets the job, I think, is, is going to be a pretty easy one. Tomorrow, the Hurricanes will enter the hotel hubs alongside the other squads. For those who have spent far longer in quarantine, the league says it'll support anyone who feels the need to leave. We totally uh, you know, understand that players, particularly international players, have had a long, uh, I guess, winter for us and summer for the, the English players. Someone feeling that sentiment. How many hubs and bubbles have you been in? Too much. Summer? too much. It does get a bit strenuous. Hopefully it's all worthwhile when the first ball is bowled. Still a star is the latest Tasmanian horse to nominate for the $5 million All-Star Mile. The Bill Ryan trained mare is the second local horse to nominate after Mystic Journey. She was named this year's Tasmanian three-year-old of the year after winning six of her seven starts. The public can vote for which horses make the cut from January 22. The Magic Millions Tasmanian Yearling Sale will officially has a new home. In 2021, the event will move to the Agfest site, Quirkus Park at Carrick. It's been held at Inveresk for the past 20 years, but was forced to find a new location after the site was leased to UTAS as a car park. 
Good evening. Cool westerly winds maintained our slow start to summer today. Hobart 18 degrees, Launceston 20, Burnley 16 and Devonport 19. All temperatures below average, some up to 8 degrees. Friendly beaches our warmest with 22. St Helens 19, Low Head, Bushy Park and Flinders Island 17, King Island and Grove 16, Strawn 15, Lyaweenie 10. Low level cloud moved through in that brisk airstream today, just patchy high cloud over the northeast. More cloud over the Bight and South East Australia pushing over with a high pressure system. A frontal band extends from south of WA to our south. A low is off the northwest of the nation. Tomorrow the high over the bite weakens as the cold front approaches. The low up off Western Australia moves closer to the coast. Westerlies continuing tomorrow reaching 30 knots over the north and south. More variable winds over the east coast. We have a strong wind warning from Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point and also from Stanley to St Helens Point. Hobart expecting 22 tomorrow with a shower or two. Jeeveston 20 with a shower, 19 the high for Bothwell. Launceston a top of 23 and partly cloudy. Devonport 20 and 24 for Cressy. For Burnie a partly cloudy 20 degrees, 17 for Strawn with showers, a shower or two for Curry on King Island, 17 the maximum. 23 for St Helens and partly cloudy, same for Swansea and same for Orford apart from a late shower moving in. Here's the UV, it's on 10, that's at the top of the very high range. On Thursday now, mostly cloudy, Hobart expecting 16, that's over 6 degrees below average. A slight increase in the temperature on Friday with fine partly cloudy weather and a welcome improvement for the weekend, temperatures creeping into the mid-20s and dry. Mostly sunny in Perth, fine for Adelaide and Melbourne as well, sunny 25s for Canberra and Sydney, partly cloudy over Brisbane. Bit of cloud about still, 17 in Hobart, 16 right now in Launceston, cloudy over Devonport, a cool night and 14 degrees. Getting warm by the weekend, Kim, summer is coming. Indeed it is and so is Christmas. Thanks very much Murph, that's your news for now. There'll be news, sport and weather updates later tonight. Thanks for joining us this evening. Good night.